Hi everyone, today I'm going to demo of a harness infrastructure as code management, which is a CI CD solution for IAC, infrastructure as code. So let's get started. The first thing we want to talk about is a workspace. Workspace is basically the connecting tissue between the, the infrastructure code stored in Git and the actual resources that were provisioned. In the world of uh, Terraform, which we are going to focus on uh, today, think about the workspace as a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping to a state file. Each workspace has its own state file and resources that uh, we manage. Uh, setting up a workspace is, uh, is very uh, straightforward. Uh, you basically need uh, to give it a name uh, and a type. Right now, Harness uh, supports uh, Terraform and OpenTofu. The last thing you need to configure is the location of the Terraform code. Uh, Harness uh, support all the major Git providers. In my demo, I'm using a Harness code uh, repository. This is a workspace that uh, I already uh, configured and provisioned before this uh, demo. So let's see which uh, resources I'm actually managing using this, uh, this workspace. You can see that I am uh, managing AWS resources. So we have uh, two different uh, EC2 instances here, uh, S3 bucket and some other AWS uh, configuration and resources. We also help you to manage the Terraform outputs that were generated in the last uh, provisioning process. We also help you to manage the environment and the Terraform variables. Think about this as an inline experience for managing uh, VAR files, which of course we support uh, as well. In this example, uh, probably the two key variables that we would like to focus at is the bucket name, which dictates uh, the, the prefix of the bucket, and also the instance type, which configure the type of the machines I have in this uh, workspace. So let's make a few changes. I'm gonna change the, the bucket name, and I'm also gonna change the type of the instance. Right now it's T2 micro. Let's see what happens if I try to change it to large. As you can see, I am not able to do that because the system prevent me from doing it because there is a policy that makes sure that an instance type cannot be T2 large. To have those policies in place, Harness is using a OPA, Open Policy Agent, as the policy engine across the entire platform of Harness. In ICM, we made a very native and advanced integration with OPA and we are able to find policy violations as early as the configuration time of the workspace. As you can see, as I'm trying to configure and set up the workspace before any runtime event, before I'm trying to apply these changes, we are able to find these uh, violations and help the user to properly configure the, the workspace based on the policies of the organization. So we don't have to wait for runtime because then it just might be uh, too late. This is a great way to shorten the cycle time of setting up the workspace and giving the feedback uh, to, the, to the user much faster. These policies can actually be applied on every configuration part of the workspace. In this example, I did it on the instance uh, type but you can also do it on the configuration that we saw earlier. For example, you can enforce a naming convention for the workspace or a specific version of Terraform or open TOFU to make sure nobody's using a dated version of these technologies. A very common use case that we are seeing among our customers is that they wanna make sure that the Terraform code is being fetched from the main branch. Nobody's trying to provision resources based on code that is still in feature branch and was not merged into the main branch as part of a PR process. So all that can be enforced and the violations can be uh, enforced at design time, which again, really reduced uh, the feedback loop. So um, yeah, we have the configuration. Now let's go back and make a change of the instance type, which we are allowed to do, right? We can't do large. So let's change this to small 
and this is uh, something that I am allowed to do, so I just did. Now let's go and make some changes in the Terraform code behind this, uh, behind this workspace and see how we help you to actually test the, the PR process in a completely automated way. So I'm going to go to Harness Code Repository, and this is the repository that is connected to, uh, to this uh, workspace. And let's uh, edit the, the main TF file. This is a very simple uh, telephone code, but of course, Harness uh, so, uh, support uh, a much more uh, complex and real life uh, telephone code. But for this purpose of, uh, but for the purpose of this demo, we are just using a very simple uh, code. So, um, you know, if you remember, I had two uh, EC2 instances in the workspace, which is defined by the count. Let's see how Harness ICM helped me to test a change where I'm actually uh, increasing the number of instances from two uh, to three instances. So I am going to commit the changes and I'm going to follow the rules and do it using a feature branch. Ooh. And I'm going to hit commit. And now the next thing I need to do before uh, creating the, the pull request is to uh, give a description to this uh, PR. This is where I'm using a uh, harness uh, IDA, the AI uh, assistant that will help me to generate a description. The only thing I need to do is click on this and it automatically generates uh, a description, which, you know, uh, definitely cover the change I made, increase the count of uh, AWS EC2 instances from two to three in the main TF file. Think about a use case where the PR is a little bit more complex, where you have a lot of uh, files that were changed. This, this feature definitely removes some toil from, from me uh, when, when it generates a description uh, automatically. So we're good with this. Let's uh, create the pull request and see what happens. Awesome. So as I opened uh, the PR, Harness ICM did some uh, automation behind the scene, behind the scene, and uh, populate some information that will really help me to understand what's going to be the impact of uh, of this change if I will apply it against my, my resources. So let's see the information that we have. The first thing that we see is a summary of the Terraform plan. We can see that we actually uh, added a third instance right here. And also we made a change to the two instances I, I already have. This is because I changed the instance type. I also see that we have two resources in the state file that were not affected uh, on this uh, change. This is uh, great. It's very important for me to understand not just which resources were or going to be affected by this change, but also I want to make sure that resources that were not su supposed to be affected were not touched. We also can see that the values of the Terraform outputs, and we can also see all the different OPA policies that we are evaluating at runtime against the plan in this uh, particular uh, scenario. So we can see that we run a bunch of uh, OPA policies against the resources in the plan. And the way I set them up is I made them uh, warnings, which means they won't break the, the automation. They will just be populated here. I can also set them as uh, as failures, which means if I breach any of these runtime policies, this automation will break and I will not be able to merge this change. Another thing that we are able to see is a cost estimation. We will be, we are able to see how the, the cloud cost is going to change if I will apply these changes. Again, because I added another machine and changed the instance type of the existing machines, uh, it is uh, not a big surprise that the cost is going to uh, to spike a little bit. So that's great. Let's uh, you know I'm fine with these changes. Let's just uh, merge them into the main branch. And now what uh, will actually happen is that these changes will trigger a pipeline coming from the main branch that will apply these changes against the uh, against the workspace. Just one thing about um, you know the OPA policies. Uh, we are seeing that here I made some uh, policies against uh, the Terraform plan. 
we saw earlier how we are able to uh, run policies against the workspace configuration. So this is another type of uh, area where we can hook and do some policy evaluation. We also have the ability to run policies against the state. So against the actual resources in the cloud to make sure that they are configured as they are uh, supposed to. Now let's go to the, to the pipeline and see how that look like. So here is the pipeline that we are provisioning. And, uh, you know, this is a fairly uh, simple pipeline that we are uh, executing here, but uh, Harness has the most advanced uh, pipeline capabilities among all the different uh, vendors, uh, which means you can actually customize it uh, fairly easily. You can add here security checks, run things in parallel to speed up the execution, connect it to external systems such as Jira and ServiceNow, add here a custom execution, all that is uh, supported uh, out, uh, out of the box. Uh, we did the Terraform plan. So now let's uh, see uh, the approval step that will help us to understand what is going to, to change. Very similar to what uh, we saw in the, in the PR. Uh, of course, it's the same changes, uh, but uh, of course, a more uh, visual uh, view of that. Uh, so we can see uh, all the different changes that are happening. We can see that uh, we are changing these two EC2 instances. We can actually see exactly which attribute is going to change. In this example, we're changing the, the instance type from T2 micro to uh, uh, T2 small. And we see the resources that are being added. And right here, we can see which resources in the state were not or are not going to be impacted by this change. We're also seeing here all the different policies that we are evaluating. And again, they are set up as warning, meaning they will not prevent me from moving forward. And we can also see here the cost estimation for each resource that has its, uh, its price change. Okay, I am fine with these changes. Let's just approve this and wait for the apply to, uh, to complete. A few things uh, you know that are actually happening uh, behind the scene that I definitely uh, want to talk about. So first, you can actually decide how and where you want to run this pipeline. You can run this pipeline locally on environment that you can uh, set up. Or if you want, you can run this pipeline on Harness Cloud so you don't have to worry about setting up the environment for this pipeline. It's uh, totally up to you. Another thing that we have is uh, is a backend for states. So uh, we provide state management for all the state files. So you don't have to worry about storing the state files in a secure location, implement access control and locking mechanism. All that is uh, provided uh, out of the box as part of uh, the solution. One more thing that uh, maybe you have noticed is that the pipeline is separated from the workspace. Uh, in many, among many other uh, vendors, uh, the way that it works is that there is no explicit pipeline. The pipeline is part of the, the workspace, uh, which might seem like uh, is an easier user experience, but it actually makes it much difficult uh, to scale. Think about a use case where you have hundreds of different workspaces and state files, and now you want to make a change to the workflow, to the pipeline. For example, you want to add a security check as part of this pipeline. With Harness, you only have to do it once. It's a single pipeline that can be used across all the different workspaces. And you don't have to go to every workspace and make that change. Very difficult to, to maintain and control the policies with that approach. With Harness, we makes it much, much easier. So we're done with the with the apply. So the changes were, uh, were pushed to the you know, to the cloud. Let's go back to our workspace. Here's the one we just, uh, uh, we just uh, created. We can see that we have here a third uh, machine. Another thing that we have here is actually um, execution history, full audit of all the different changes that uh, took place against this uh, workspace. And this is the state management. We store revision of each state so if you have the right level of permissions, you can actually access each revision of the state. You can download it and you can also compare two different uh, revisions. 
and see exactly what have changed from one revision to another. This is actually very useful uh, in the case of troubleshooting. Think about the case where you made a change, now there is a negative impact in, in production. This helps you to see what was the last stable state of, the, uh, of those resources and you, can, uh, and you can fix that and remediate. The last thing I wanna talk about is a drift detection. Uh, drift, probably one of the biggest challenges that uh, teams have when they are using a Terraform is basically a discrepancy between the state file and the actual resources. We have the ability to automatically detect drifts and notify uh, the users when, when that happened. Here is an example of a workspace that is in a drift mode. As soon as we identify a drift, we change the status of the workspace to drift. And we also, also highlight the different uh, resources that cause the drift all the way down to the level of the attribute. So in this example, the drift occurred in the instance state attribute. The expected value is running, but it's actually in stopped. In this particular use case, what I did is I went directly to AWS Cloud and I stopped this service outside of this process. We have the ability to automatically identify this and, and notify the, the users. And you know, I think this is basically what I wanted to, uh, to show you today. Hopefully you find this uh, useful and you're more than welcome to start a free trial of the product and uh, give it a spin. Thank you very much.